everyone, I'm Ann Wheel from Flax and Twine, where you'll find all sorts of projects and patterns for the modern maker at flaxandtwine.com. And I'm so excited to be here with Yarnspirations today to show you how to make my favorite pot holder in the whole world. Now, my grandmother taught me how to make this style pot holder when I was six, and I went bonkers and made pot holders for everybody. Um, but it really is a great pot holder because it's um, made double thick, so we're folding a piece of fabric in half here, and then there's a hand cover here to protect those um, backs of your hands when you're reaching into the oven. So I think it's really one of the best, and once you've made one for your kitchen, you gotta make a ton. <laughs> What's nice is all you need is one ball of Lily's Sugar and Cream Cotton, and you wanna make sure you get the super size because with the super size, you can make one complete pot holder. I've done a version in black here, which I love. I feel like is really modern and, um, and then a version in white. And to make these, we're going to need that one ball. Um, you'll need a US 10 needle or six and a half millimeter needle. Now I use a bigger needle cause I hold the yarn double to make these pot holders. I love that bigger stitch look. And so that's really fun. And then you'll need a crochet hook just to finish around the edge. That's how you join all those layers. So we'll need a five millimeter crochet hook. And um, I love this little leather detail to hang it and just make it look a little more fresh. Um, you can always undo this and take it off if you um, want to wash them, which, you know, with 100% cotton or 100, they're washable. And so I like this suede detail. This is 1 8 inch ultra suede lace. And then you're going to want a tape measure. So let's go ahead and get started and dive into making these fabulous pot holders. I know you're going to love it. All right, everybody, let's get started on our pot holders. As I mentioned in the introduction, we are going to hold two strands of this at the same time. Now, if you want, you can get two balls and you can make two pot holders out of the two balls and take one strand from each and work from it. But if you've just purchased one ball, you can still make that work. And I'm going to show you how. So the first thing is that the yarn is coming from around the ball. So that's one end of the yarn. But then the other end is in the middle of the ball. So you reach in and you kind of grab a portion of yarn or a loop of yarn from the center and you pull that out. And sometimes a bigger wad of this comes out than what came out and you just have to kind of work to find the end. But here's the end of the middle. And so this, this version wasn't too bad in terms of what came out. Okay, so I've got my inside length of yarn free and I'm going to pick up my outside strand and I'm going to take a little bit of yarn off this so we can match the lengths a little bit. And I'm going to match those ends together and now you can go ahead and just keep knitting using um, both strands at the same time. All right, so I'm going to put this over to the right and now we are going to start with a long tail cast on. So to do that we start with a slip knot right here and I'm going to go fairly quickly through the cast on. If you um, need help casting on there are lots of videos in the yarnspirations.com library. Um, we're going to go ahead and cast on 22 stitches and I do a long tail cast on um, but I do it like my mom taught me. So if you know a long tail cast on differently go ahead and do it how you know it but I've always done it over my thumb like this so it's easiest for me to do it that way. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to cast on 22 stitches. Okay. I have 22 stitches cast on here. I'm going to just count to check and make sure and when you count just make sure that you're counting because we're holding this double two of them make one stitch so i'm going to count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two so what you don't want to do is count um each one of these individually because um that would be more that it would end up giving you let fewer because you were counting every single strand but here we're counting them as pairs and there are 22 stitches there. I've also had someone 
when I've had them cast on double, knit into every single strand, and that will expand your knitting quite quickly. So don't, try not to do that either. When we knit now, when we go into a stitch, every stitch has two strands in it because we are holding this yarn double. So this pot holder is made of a stockinette stitch. So that's a basic knitting um, stitch. We're just gonna knit across the first row. And then to create the stockinette stitch, we purl the second row. So we're gonna knit the first row and then purl the second row. And this pattern is really basic. We basically, we're gonna make the body part of the pot holder first. So that's the doubled over part. And um, to do that, we're just gonna knit these 22 stitches for 15 inches. So you're just gonna start with this knitting on this side and purling on the other side, and I'll show you that part as well. Um, and then you're just gonna keep on going for 15 inches, and then we're gonna bind off. So let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you the purling, and then I'll set you off on your own to finish um, the body of the pot holder. Okay, here we are at the end of our knit, first knit row. And now I'm gonna turn it around and to make that stockinette stitch so that it's all knit on the one side and all purl on the other, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna purl this side. So go ahead and purl this back. And now, um, you just keep doing that. So always knit on the one side, on the right side, and always purl on the wrong side, and do that for 15 inches and we'll bind off. You'll see this pot holder is so easy to make and put together. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, everyone, so I've continued to um, make this stockinette piece, and if I measure it out, it is 15 inches. And I think it was about, um, I, can't, I like to count rows, so I think it's 68 rows total, if you wanna do it that way, but 50, about 15 inches is great. You don't need to be so specific. And you'll see that the edges roll in a little bit, so this will flatten out as we crochet it. And also the unevenness of the stitches that comes from using two strands at the same time, that will also even out a little bit. So we will block it at the end, and that um, takes out some of that unevenness as well. Okay, so now we've come to our end of our knitting piece. So this is the main body of our pot holder, and we're gonna just cast off here. So we're gonna knit one, knit two, and then we're gonna take the first stitch we knit and bring it over the second one. And we wanna bind off fairly loosely so that it doesn't bring in the edge. We want this to be nice and even with the whole knit piece. So we knit the next one and then pull the first stitch over and do that across the whole thing. And then we're gonna weave in the ends. Okay, so I've bound off that whole edge and I'm down to my last stitch. So I cut about eight inches left and I'm gonna pull that needle out and just feed the tail of that yarn through the last loop of my bind off and pull it tight. So there we have the body of our pot holder and in the, when we make it, it just folds right in half and this becomes the main thick part to protect your hand. So, but before we get to the making part, we need to, we're gonna weave in the ends here and then we're gonna make the cover part. So I'm gonna show you how to weave in one end. I like to kind of try and weave them in as I go so that I don't have too much finishing to do at the end. So we're gonna feed this onto a darning needle. Um, and we're gonna come in here, and I like to do this on the back side. And what I do is I just follow along the yarn of the knit stitch from underneath. So here, see how it curves under here? I'm gonna follow that, and it comes out here. And gently pull that into place. And then this stitch yarn comes up over this top and in, back into the place we just came out of, just like a knit stitch. And pull there. And I'm gonna do this for a couple of these stitches and then go ahead and trim it off. So 
go ahead and weave in all your ends and um, and then we'll dive into the cover. All right, to make the hand cover part, we just go ahead and cast on 22 more stitches, which I've already done, and then we're gonna keep doing that stockinette for, instead of for that 15 inches, we're gonna do it for about seven and a quarter because we want it, uh, we lose some of the um, length in this pot holder part when we fold it over. So go ahead and I've knit the first, I've cast on and knit the first row. And now we continue in the stockinette. So I'm gonna purl and just keep going on this piece until it measures seven and a quarter inches. For that seven and a quarter, it basically ends up being about two rows shorter than what half of this would be. So I think half, this is 68 rows total, half would be 34. So then for this one, you'd do about 32 rows. But if, you, if you're just measuring, it would be seven and a quarter. So go ahead and do that. Um, we'll, bind, we'll measure and bind off together and then we'll, we'll assemble the pot holder. We're almost there. All right, so I finished the cover here. It's at seven and a quarter inches or 32 rows for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and bind this off. And this is just gonna sit on top of here as the hand cover, but bind it off and weave in those ends and then we'll assemble it. So to bind off, remember we knit two and then take the first one and bring it over the one we just made, knit the next one, take the one that's first on the needle, pull it off, keep doing that across this um, piece and then we'll assemble the pot holder. Don't forget to weave in your ends. Okay, so here I have my long um, body piece of the pot holder and then my hand cover, which is a little bit shorter than half of the long piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and match up my um, bound off edge and my cast on edge on the, on the body piece of the pot holder. And then the cover just sits right on top and you're gonna put the cast on edge up at the top and um, the bound off edge or the cast off edge here at the bottom, I think that makes a nice um, edging for where your hand goes. And we're gonna start crocheting here in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit. You wanna make sure that this is as exactly in half as you can get it by matching up these edges. And then we're gonna add this cover right down here at the base. And I like to start by sticking my crochet hook through the side, through the first stitch after the half and the second. So you'll see I've got a little bit of that base kind of at the bottom of it. And then I've gone through all three edges, the cover, the inside part of the body, and the outside part of the body. And I'm gonna just take my yarn and I'm going to put it over my crochet hook and pull a loop through. And then I'm gonna just put, I like to hold the yarn over my pinky, so that allows me to have that extra tension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that working yarn. The working yarn is what goes to the ball. So we're, you can see we're almost out. We've almost used that whole ball. And I'm gonna pull another loop through and that starts that initial chain. So this is just really a slip knot through to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually put it into the same spot that I went through on this one. And I'm gonna put the working yarn over the crochet hook and I'm gonna pull a loop through. So now I have two loops on my crochet hook and I'm gonna put the working yarn over the crochet hook again and pull it through the two loops. So we've done that our first single crochet. And then to keep going, we're gonna put it in the next stitch over on the cover, the next stitch over on the inside part of the body, and then the next stitch over on the back. And I do like to go through um, not just the outside part, but um, a full stitch 
under. So I'm going to go so that you're going through the V, not through just this outside part, but the V, the entire stitch. So I go into the next V. So see how I'm getting both um, strands of a stitch on this hook. And then I'm going to pull, put the working yarn over the hook, pull a loop through, and then pull a loop through both on the hook. So I'm going to put it through the next stitch over and the next stitch over and the next stitch on the back side. Now what you'll find is you don't want to go through absolutely every row because you will start to, that's too much thickness in the crochet chain and it'll start to splay out. Um, meaning there's too much, um, too much of kind of the crochet stitching for what the knitting can handle. So every now and then you're going to want to skip a stitch. So I generally find that every fifth stitch on the rows um, is good to skip. So let's say um, I'm going to maybe skip the next one. So here is an example. I'm going to just skip this one because it's a really tight one right there. So um, there's a stitch buried in there, but I don't think it'll notice as much if I put it in the next stitch over. So like I said, you're gonna end up skipping about five row, like uh, about one row for every five stitches. Is kind of how I like to think about it. And so I skipped one on the back, so I'm gonna, um, but remember we also have two fewer rows on the front, so you don't have to do that as often. And the way to kind of, so here I'm going to skip this one on the inside. Um, the way to think about it is you basically want to come out with them all matching. You know they're the same number of rows about um, because you measured it. So as you go along and you're crocheting this together, you want to kind of line this up and make sure that you're kind of matching them in terms of length and space. Um, so that you get evenly to the end. But you can see that this gives a nice little chain along here. Um, so go ahead and keep doing this and um, we will match back up at the corner because there's a little something special at the corner. So I'll go through one of these one more time. You go through the cover, you go through the inside part, and you go through the outside part. I'm gonna, and then you put the, working yarn over your hook, pull it through all three layers so that now you have two on your hook and then you pull it through the last two loops. Okay, so go ahead and do that and I will meet you at the corner. Okay, so every now and then as you're going along, you just wanna like lay it down and check and make sure you haven't added too many crochet stitches for the number of rows. So here's where you'll see um, if you've gone in every single stitch or every single row and made a crochet stitch in every single row, this will start to kind of puff out and uh, ruffle a little bit. You want it to lay flat with the rows laying flat as much as possible. So it is pretty to have um, one crochet stitch for every row, but it will splay out if you do that. So. Um, that's where the crochet part is a little tricky. You want to skip those rows so that it lays flat and then also make it so that as you get to the end, it, um, they all three match up. So I have about uh, seven stitches left and I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and I'll probably skip one somewhere in here so it doesn't get ruffled and then we'll do the corner. Okay, so I've hit the corner here and I like how this is lying, so I don't feel like I need to pull out, but if, um, you know, if somewhere along you don't like how something looks, you can always just pull it out and redo it. But in the corner, you're gonna make one for this side. We actually make three crochet stitches into the corner. So this is the one from the side, and then I'm gonna go through these corner pieces, and I'm gonna make one for the corner. So one, another single crochet stitch. And then I'm going to make one for the top. So that's the third. So I go through the corner piece again. And I'm going to make that one for the top. Now, for the top, so you can see how making those three crochet stitches makes um, this 
have a corner there or just have enough stitches to come around the corner. Now for the top, you don't have to worry as much about skipping that row here because the um, crochet stitches will equal, better equal the um, knit stitches because they're facing this way as opposed to the side. So now you're just gonna go in, in between these two stitches and the same here in between the two stitches and the same here in between the two stitches. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and pull the same thing, pull that one loop through, then pull um, the working yarn through both, go in the next stitch over, and do this over to the next corner in between these stitches here. So I just wanted to show really closely along the top that you're going in in between each of these stitches. So it's right here um, in between the, um, on the cast on it's easy to see right there, right there, right there. So you're kind of going, you're going on either side of how the V is coming out here. But on the bound off side here, if you've got that um, down here on the bottom, it's a little harder to see. But again, you want to go through here on this side and see this V here. You want to go, then the next stitch would be on the other side. So it's almost like you're just skipping this whole row of stitches so that you're one for one as you go across the top. Okay, we're getting there you guys. So I've gone along the top and I've done the last stitch in the corner and we're gonna treat this corner the same way we did the last one, which is that we did one stitch and now we're gonna do two cro single crochets more so that we get it to turn that corner. So there's the corner stitch and then one more is the first one on the left side of the pot holder. So now we're gonna go down the left side the same way we did the first, so make sure you're skipping kind of every fourth or fifth one along here so that it doesn't splay out too far. And some of that splay, um, like you can see, I probably put one or two extra stitches in here than I should have, but some of that will come out when you block it. So this really, um, does well after you wet it down and kind of stretch it out to the size and um, fit that you want. But let's go ahead and finish this side and then we'll add the leather detail. Okay, so here we've come to the last corner and so where this one we don't need to treat as a corner, this we just treat as an edge, but we pull a single crochet through here and then that's the last one and you'll see we basically use I used a couple extra bits, but you don't want to waste too much yarn because this is all I have left. And you're going to pull that through uh, that last corner. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to seam in these ends. This just goes up um, the back side. So we just can put this end right back up kind of the middle of the seam and do the same with the other side and then trim it. And so this, this corner end goes right up this seam. And then you can trim these right to the edge. And then what you wanna do before you, we add the leather part, I'm not gonna do this right now, but um, it's best to block this before you add the leather part. So what you want to do is go ahead and submerge this in cold water and then lay it flat to dry. And what will happen is it, it kind of stretches out some, the edges kind of even out, and um, the stitches um, where you've kind of held it double will even out as well. So you can kind of see it's a little more kind of crunchy and curved. And when you um, wet it down and lay it out flat, it gets it, it, the ends, the edges and the stitches kind of um, even out really nicely. So, but I'm not gonna do this, uh, I'm not gonna block this before we add the leather piece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to add the leather braid now so you know, but um, make sure you block that before you do it at home. Okay, so to do the leather part, we need 40 inches about of this leather cord. And you're gonna do it in um, 
four 10 inch pieces. So you want to measure that out, a 10 inch piece, and cut it there. So here's my second 10 inch piece and my third. And you can just get this leather at your local craft store. Um, they have it there. You just ask them for their leather lace and they'll show you where it is. Um, okay, so I've got that for those four pieces. We're gonna set aside one for now. And we're going to um, take this and we're gonna feed it through the corner. Now you don't wanna put it through one of these far corners. You wanna put it in a corner, it doesn't matter which one, um, near the opening. So you see here, doing that crochet, we've got our nice thick um, part to hang onto the pot and then the thinner part to protect your hand. But if we put the um, tie down in one of these corners, that's trouble because you're going into the fire with that. So you want this down at your opening and it doesn't matter which side. I'm gonna choose this corner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this crochet hook through the three layers of the corner. And I'm gonna take each one of these leather straps and I'm gonna pull it through. So you wanna go through the same place and pull it through. One more time. And pull it through. Okay. So now I have three of my laces through the corner and I'm gonna even them out all in one spot. So pull these edges through. And we're just gonna knot this so that it doesn't come out, cut, slip back through. So use all three and do an overhand knot. And then pull that tight against the corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and braid this, these three ends. So we're gonna go ahead and just bring the right one over the middle and the left one over the middle. It's just a standard braid. We're gonna do this along the whole edge. I like adding this fun little touch. I think it modernizes it. And you know, I you could either throw the leather in the washing machine and see how, <laughs> how it does. Because the great thing about these pot holders is that they're 100% cotton. Or if you want, you can remove this and redo it. Or you could just do this with the cotton thread as well if you want it to be, not have to hassle about it later. So we got this braid done. And you wanna go almost to the very end. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull it through so that the braid's about in the middle. And we're gonna undo this knot here, and we're gonna braid up the rest of this so that we leave about the same amount. We're leaving about an inch or so at the end. And we're gonna match up these ends here. like that so I like that look we're gonna take this extra piece and we're gonna match the end up with the rest of the tassel so I'm just laying it flat to match the rest of the tassel and then I'm gonna bring it around both braids and you don't want to make it too tight because we're gonna run the end through but you're gonna wrap it around three times and then we're gonna take the end of this and just stick it down this spiral one at a time. So I've got it here, I'm gonna pull it through. And then the next spiral. Kinda... You could use a darning needle that might help make it a little bit easier, but you can also just use your fingers. That's two and here's my third spiral. That's three. And then we're just gonna tighten that loop 
down onto those braid ends. Just like that. And then once you have that nice and tight, let's find the other end here. Then we're just going to trim the leather end that comes through the spirals right here at the edge. So now I have my nice fun braid and tassel and I'm just going to trim some of these ends here just like that. So now you have your great little pot holder uh, ready to go and protect your hand. Okay, everybody, that's it. I hope you loved making these great pot holders, and I am not kidding you when I say they will be your favorite ones because they're so durable, so protective, and you can just take that tassel off, throw them in the wash whenever you need to. Um, have fun. Make a ton of these for your relatives because they're going to thank you for it. Okay, have a great day. Thanks for coming here to make with me. Mm -hmm.